I'd like to talk to you about my philosophy of commerce or business, and particularly how I teach it. And I like to call it conscientious commerce. This is best understood in contrast to what could be called pure commerce. And this is a classic idea of buy low, sell high. And then implied with that is leave them dry. So the idea of buy low, sell high is you acquire your resources at the lowest possible cost, and then you turn around and then you sell them at the highest possible price. And the difference between the two is called profit. And this perspective is mainly about making as much money as possible. Well, conscientious commerce is fundamentally different from that. The main goal in conscientious commerce is creating value for people. So the idea is that you acquire resources and then you transform them, making them better. And then when you eventually uh, sell whatever your services or goods are to people, they're getting something much better than what you started out with. When you're buying your resources, you're giving a good fair price to those who give it to you. When you eventually sell the product or service, then you are creating, you've, you're giving them something of more value than they could have gotten had they bought the direct resources themselves. So each side of the transaction is a good deal for the other person. You've created value. And ultimately, uh, for this perspective, conscientious commerce could also be called value commerce, but ultimately it's about the fact that we need to take care of our conscience. Um, but again, uh, when I say that this is a matter of taking care of our conscience, our, our conscience is a part of us that tells us what is right and what is wrong. And I'm not saying that we need to take care of other people's conscience. In fact, uh, we need to take care of our own conscience. It's not because my manager thinks something is right that I have to do it. We have to be convinced of ourselves. And likewise, we should not impose our conscience on other people. We need to respect other people's conscience. But when we take care of the conscience, the part in us that tells us that we're doing things right or that we should not do certain things, then we find that the business and commerce is truly uh, effective, is focused on creating value and not just about making money. There's some key principles here. The first being that people are more valuable than money. And when we consider this, fundamentally, we need to treat people the same way we would like to be treated ourselves. So you might consider that uh, some, you might have had the experience that maybe you've traveled internationally and then when you came back, you found suddenly you had a huge uh, mobile phone bill because you forgot to turn off roaming and the company just nailed you of maybe 50 euros for leaving your phone on uh, for a while. And companies do things like this so they can get as much money as they can from the customers. But you as business managers or business managers in training need to consider how you've been unfairly treated. And then when you set the policies, you need to consider how you would like to be treated in that situation. Uh, when we value people, we consider that great people are not those who make the most money, but great people are those who help others the most. And those who help others create value uh, the most. Money as a goal for business is uh, fundamentally misdirected because money is the root of all kinds of evils. It's uh, a lot of business replaces people and creating value for people with money instead. And they measure value in terms of money. But when we do this, we lose sight of the real goal, which is actually the creation of value. And ultimately, we need to take care of our conscience in interacting with people. Another principle that derives from this is that employees are more valuable than customers. And this uh, could be a controversial idea. But concretely, when we talk about taking care of people, helping people, when we work day to day, the people we interact with are mostly our fellow employees, more so than the customers. So concretely, the people that we need to help are those who work along with us. 
And a lot of the time when people, when organizations prioritize customers, such as a slogan, the customer's always right, or the customer's number one, this is because customers are a source of money and they are, val they are valuing customers as a source of money more than the employees, the people that they work with day to day. In fact, uh, organizations that do focus on taking care of their employee happiness find that their organizations are more productive and they actually satisfy customers much more because happy, satisfied employees will do high quality work that they're very happy about. And this shows in the products uh, and services they're providing and the customers are more satisfied. So this actually is not a matter of prioritizing employees versus making money. It actually leads to more productive, more satisfying uh, organizations. And ultimately, again, we need to take care of our conscience in interacting with people. Now, just so that you don't think that this is my unique perspective, uh, I have some links, some resources of other like-minded uh, perspectives on business. Uh, there's a special issue of Harvard Business Review uh, called Be Happy, Be Audacious. And among other things, it, looked, it has some articles that look at the profitability of happy companies, of companies that emphasize uh, happiness among happiness and well-being among their employees. Then there's an article uh, by Forbes on five reasons employees are more important than customers. And another one by Monster, which is a major recruiting organization. Why value my employees before my customers? So this is a perspective that I take and is permeated in this course.